evening, everyone. This is Black Literature, Black History, and I'm Jason Williams. Now that we've had a few discussions about the story home, I want to close out by taking a look at a few subjects that Langston Hughes covered that we haven't really talked about. And the first subject that I want to cover is the point that Langston Hughes, using the character of Roy Williams, is demonstrating that racism is a slow lynching. Roy Williams was slowly lynched throughout this entire story. If you look at what happened to him through racism, classism, you know, first he experienced poverty. When he saw the poverty in Europe on his way to the U.S., it made him sad, and that's when he began to cough. And he realized he wanted to come home. When he got home to the U.S., he was called nigger, and it said his skin burned when he was called a nigger from the racism. And then he goes to the church to play his violin. And while at the church, through his stream of consciousness, he reveals to us that it's hot as hell in the church, his throat was burning, and while he's in the church, through his stream of consciousness, we notice that his life is flashing before his eyes as he reminisces about his mother and his violin and how he made his come up playing the violin all the way from uh, the Victrola all the way to uh, eventually going to Berlin and Europe to play. And then at the close, of the concert while he's shaking hands he feels a sharp pain across his shoulders and then later that evening when he gets up to take a stroll it says that ashy pale his face and his cheeks were sunken and this is before he goes out into the night and before he puts on his gloves his hands are trembling and then we all know what happens when he goes out into the night, runs into Miss Reese, where he is finally beaten and lynched and hung. But what Langston Hughes is trying to demonstrate throughout this narrative is that racism slowly lynches the people that are involved in it. It's a, it's a slow lynching process. So we need to notice that when we're, when we're reading these stories, you know, when people get lynched, you may not know it, but you should do a little bit of research, which we will. And you, you've already heard the song, A Strange Fruit, where they burn you, tie you to a tree, and hang you. It's a big, it's a big festival. So all of these things that Langston Hughes, or not Langston Hughes, but Roy Williams was experiencing with his racism and his sickness was a slow lynching which ended up in his death. Another thing that's very interesting in this story is, uh, and while I was studying this story, I was asked once, who is the narrator? Who is the narrator of the story? We know that Langston Hughes is the author. We got that part. But who is the narrator of the story? And I had to think about that a long time, and in my ultimate conclusion, and I could be wrong, this is the discussion that we have, I think that the narrator of this story is the United States. I think that it's the United States, and I'm going to give you a few examples why I believe that. So if we look at the story, at the very beginning of the story, bear with me as I find the story. Home. Okay. At the very beginning of the story, Roy is, is disrespected. It says, when the boy came back, there were bright stickers and tags and strange languages the home folks couldn't read all over his bags and on his violin case. You know, when the boy came back. So it's, the narrator has a disrespectful tone. And as you read through this, as you read through here, you'll notice that there are many occasions where the narrator himself 
refers to Roy as a nigger. You know, and even though this is a very sad story, you notice that the narrator is not very compassionate. You know, the narrator just talks about what happens, you know. You know, we, we find compassion with Roy Williams because of his mother showing him love and his stream of consciousness, you know, demonstrating us to us what type of person he is. And while he was getting beat, we're, we're listening to Roy's thoughts, not the narrator. However, the narrator is, uh, is not very compassionate. So I believe that the narrator telling what, what goes on in the U.S., the narrator being very honest, but he's speaking in the voice of white America. And let me look, let me see if I can find an example. Okay. Roy was passing lots of people now in the brightness of the main street, but he saw none of them. He saw only dreams and memories and heard music. Some of the people stopped to stare and grin at the flare of the European coat on his slender brown body, spats in a cane on a young nigger in Hops Hopkinsville, Missouri. What's the big idea, hey? A little white boy or two cat called, hey coon. But everything might have been all right. See, this is the narrator. The narrator says, some of the people stopped to stare and grin at the flare of the European coat on his slender brown body. Spats and cane on a young nigger in Hopkinsville, Missouri, exclamation point. What's the big idea, hey? And then a white boy or two cat called, hey, come. So therefore, you know, the narrator, I believe that the narrator is white America. You know, you may disagree. If you, if you disagree after you read this story, uh, I would love to hear some suggestions on who you believe the narrator is, and give me give me some uh, reasons. And I may, you know, we're going we're, throughout this, these videos. We're going to go and you know we're going to refer back to this story and other stories. You know, these are not final discussions. And one thing that I want to address as well is, um, I used to be this type of person, and there are other people who are this type of person people who say, I don't read fiction. I don't have time to read fiction. Fiction is not real. I don't have time. I'm going to read autobiographies, biographies, straight history, because fiction is not real, so I don't have to waste my time with fiction. Okay, we just read home. Tell me what is fiction in this story. Tell me what's not real in this story. What's not real? The poverty? Is poverty real? Are people in the streets suffering while other people are just living it up? Are there women selling their bodies in the street trying to uh, make a few bucks to, to feed their families? Is there racism in, in America? Were, not, were people not getting hung back in 1932? And we're going to get back to that. I, I did tell you that I'm going to um, do some research and demonstrate lynchings in the 1930s. But we have another story to cover in the ways of white folks where a double lynching uh, takes place. And then after that story, then we're going, to, we're going to get into the lynchings. But was that not happening? You know, people like to say fiction is not real and I don't have time for it. So what, tell me what occurred in this fiction story that wasn't real. And tell me that this story is not, is not as real as what you learn in history class when you go in high school. You learn about George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Christopher Columbus discovered America. You know, that's straight history, is that real? Christopher Columbus came to the came to America. They don't describe first of all, they don't even tell you that America is from North America all the way to South America. He landed in the Caribbean. He discovered America. They don't tell you that a 
that a, a servant, a black servant, was the first one to spot lamb. And we're going to look at uh, Christopher, at, while I'm on this subject, we're going to look at Christopher Columbus's journals. They have his journals online, translated to English, and it's like reading the devil's writing. We're going to look at that, we're going to read some of it, and it's going to make you sick in the stomach. It's like reading, literally reading the devil's writing. So that's history. This is fiction. What's really happening? Langston Hughes is using this fiction, reflecting things that happened, that was going on during his lifetime, and it's real. The bonus march, was that fiction? Hoover drove the veterans out of Washington, was that fiction? No, that's real. So, and that leads me to another subject, and then we're going to close on this. And that is, you can't be lazy when you're reading these stories. You know, a story does not just, when you, when you approach a story, you can't just read the text and say, I'm bringing my experiences to this text, so I'm going to get out of it, but I'm going to get out of it. You can't approach a text that way. Approaching reading that way is why many people find the reading boring. When you approach a text, find out, like I said, there's three elements that you need to look at. The author, the message being transmitted, and the audience. And when you're looking at the integrity of these three elements, you have to know the time period in which it takes place. You have to know what the author is addressing. What was going on in this time period? Why is he writing a story about lynching? Because in the 1930s, lynching was on a rise. You know, you have to know that. When I got to the point about Roy touched down when Hoover drove the veterans out of Washington, I, had, I didn't know when I first read this that that was the bonus march. I had a professor point that out to me, but I didn't know anything about the bonus march. And many people don't know about the bonus march because nobody wants to know that there was an integrated march of veterans going to Washington in 1932. More people at that march than the March on Washington. And people don't want to know that the U.S. sent their own troops out to fire upon veterans and set their homes on fire. And later on, we're going to cover the bonus march, and I'm going to read to you the list of casualties that took place at the bonus march. You know, they don't want us to know about that in history, in U.S. history. They like to look at the Middle East and say, look at these people firing on their own people. No, that happened in the U.S. as well. And you have to know that. You have to look at that. And um, I was reading this story to a class of younger students, and there were many words, uh, many words, racism that they didn't understand. And you have to, you have to know about these words. For example, there was a part where they said an uppity nigger, you know, and they don't understand that. But they don't understand. They didn't. When you don't understand those words, when they call Michelle Obama uppity, saying that she's uppity as a first lady, you have to understand they're just taking off one word. They're really saying uppity nigger. That's a phrase. That was a phrase back then. You know, and the word coon, you know, they called, the, they called Roy a coon. You know, I don't know why we keep using that word nowadays when we're referring to uh, black sellouts, coons, because uh, Roy Williams wasn't a sellout. And this was, this was back in the 1930s, so I'm pretty sure that Langston Hughes is using the correct uh, usage of this word when they called out to Roy Williams, hey, coon. You know, so these are things, so don't be lazy when you read these things. And we're going to get in this when we look into criticisms 
in positions of power and perception and what we're looking at. But you can't be lazy when you're reading these texts. What I recommend you to do, and this is what we did when I was in grad school, the teacher would tell us to read a story and he would tell us, he would assign an article to accompany the story before we read it. And many times the article was a new historicist type of article which would describe what was going on in the time period of this author when the story was written. So this was written in 1934 and Langston Hughes is making references to prior to 1932 when Roy Williams was in a year of living it up. And then when you got to 1930, everybody was getting, everybody was poor. And then it hit 1932, the bonus march. The U.S. was in a bad state then. And when the U.S. gets in a bad state, black people get lynched. That's what he was addressing. And those things can relate to what happens today. When we go into a recession, we start seeing over and over and over and over black people getting attacked. And later on, when we look at um, the big C, we're going to show you that it's been the black people at the bottom of the barrel all the time. Not the Mexicans, not the Asians. It's been black people. We're going to look at that when we get to the big C, Langston Hughes does address that as well. So, this is black literature, black history, Jason Williams. And the next story that we're going to be looking at is called a Passing. That's the next story we're going to look at. But before we get to that story, I'm going to have a video about criticisms, uh, power, how to read the stories. I'm going to look at new historicism, uh, the death of the author, and some, uh, you know, just some some things to to look at before we delve into these stories. But I wanted to just go through home to use that as an example. And um, please leave your comments. Uh, please like the video and subscribe. Uh, again, this is Jason Williams. Thank you, and have a nice evening.